Here's another big trend, of course, deregulation. I was talking with uh, an old friend uh, fr uh, from school just a, a few moments ago about this uh, and how it might be affecting his own firm with 120 in, in, in the organisation. Uh, why are we worried about this? Well, partly because we don't know how it will play out. If you knew how it would play out, it would be possible to plan a strategy and put everything behind it. We don't know. And the days of having only one strategy are over. Our world is changing so fast, it's, it's actually quite dangerous to just have one view of the world. You need to have A plan A, which is what you, your best guess is how you think these things will play out in your own firm. But we must have a contingency in place. We need to know what will happen if. Just look what's happening at the top end here since the so-called Tesco Act was passed. One in three of the top 40 firms in this country are now looking at a non-legal practice merger in two years' time. That's with a Tesco or a Waitrose. Does it matter? Put your hands up if you think that's irrelevant. I think it could matter a lot. I think it could matter a lot. Uh, if we look at two firms are likely to see a public listing which means they can go and raise 50 million in the market or more to compete with your business. Does it matter? You might say, well, I'm, you know, I'm not in their business. I think it might matter. Six firms are looking at a possible merger with a non-legal firm and that will be valued at less than 20 million as a deal in the next two years. Now, I don't know how many of these people are just talking and how many will follow through, but some of them are following through. Look at this. Paribus Group has just put a 50 million investment from Duke Street Capital to acquire other law firms for insurance. That's happened in the last few weeks. And we've had um, uh, Quindell Portfolio, uh, an outsourcing company, they've just paid 19.3 million for a firm that specialises in personal injuries. Slater and Gordon, a law firm that's on the, uh, listed in Australia, has just bought Russell Jones and Walker for 54. Uh, we're just, it's just, people are just playing. They're just, just experimenting, really, just to see what could happen. They don't know. Uh, but uh, if you're looking uh, to, to uh, restructure your firm or to sell out or be absorbed, now is a very good time. Mergers and globalizations, uh, 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 mergers are absolutely vital in order to provide many of my clients with the global services which they need. It is impossible uh, for a national firm to provide coverage for uh, most of the FTSE 1000 companies in Britain now. Because those companies often have global interests and it's impossible to talk sensibly about those if you just have a national presence. So one of the reasons for these mergers, clusters of mergers in Australia, then being merged with another cluster of mergers in the UK, being merged with another cluster of mergers in Canada, is to build teams. Now, they don't necessarily have to be formal mergers. They could be virtual communities and uh, partnerships, associations, all kinds of things are happening. And at, at the same time as producing these much larger firms, uh, we have big question marks about how many offices we actually need or whether HQs are even relevant in the future. Uh, put your hands up if you had a personal meeting with your bank manager in the last three years. Some of you have, okay. Well, I'll tell you, I avoid bank managers like the plague. Uh, put your hands up if you went to see the bank manager. Put your hands up if they came to see you. There we have the future. I mean, the idea of actually going to see a lawyer is a bit crazy. Why do I want to go and see a lawyer? My time really matters. Remember, 10 seconds is an eternity, right? Three seconds makes me want to put the person in prison. So how long does it take me to go and drive to a lawyer? I mean, how long does it take me to park the car? I mean, life's too short to park a car. The lawyer can come and see me, can't he, Stuart? Come and see me, that's what it's about. My bank manager comes to see me, my lawyer comes to see me, or we talk on the phone or something, but I'm, I mean, life's too... I'm not going to chase around the country looking for a lawyer to talk to. So why do we need offices? Or if we do need offices, what is the purpose of a law firm's offices? Well, in the past, we had had an office in a place which is sufficiently prestigious to be impressive to our clients. But if we've made a decision that actually we no longer... We just made a decision. We don't meet clients at work. We do it at their work. And we always say to clients, we always come to you. 
because we need to immerse ourselves in your world so we can bring true insight rather than just advice. So that's a big change. We start to think about different ways of working um, and actually different models. We think about virtual law firms. If you type virtual law firms into Google, you get around 500,000 results. 500,000 people have already written in the last few weeks about virtual law firms. Put your hands up if you think you are a virtual law firm. Now, 500,000 people are writing about something which they think is a new trend. What does it mean to be a virtual law firm? Well, for one, it means more than just having one global institution. See, I work in a virtual company. I have a global trends company. I provide consultancy for some of the largest multinationals all over the world. People say, how many do you employ? I say, sorry? Well, how many do you have on your staff? I say, sorry, I don't understand that question. I'm a futurist. Well, surely you have people on your payroll. I don't know what a payroll is in my company. Because we work virtually. It's like Hollywood. You assemble whoever you need for that moment in time to deliver the project. You bring in the resources that you want at the speed of light. With a few mouse clicks, and a couple of WebEx crawls, and you assemble a team, and in we go. So I get built into other people's virtual teams, and they get built into mine. Now, my virtual team could include lawyers, accountants, neurophysicists, Nobel Prize winning mathematicians, whatever is needed. So it's a different way of thinking. It's more than just thinking about virtual working, but virtual working is part of it. Um, put your hands up if you've done a video call to a client in the last six months. So it's beginning. Put your hands up if, if, if at least a third of your calls to your biggest clients are now video calls. Okay, it's beginning. You see these trends starting here. Uh, put your hands up, be honest, if you've never done a video call. Um, see, the, what, what, we're at an inflection point. Now, I know for some of you, you'd say, well, I will never will need to do a video call because most of my practice is X, Y, and Z. It's very face-to-face. -face. It's all local. I say, yes, okay, but um, put your hands up if you have uh, FaceTime or some capacity for making a video call on your phone. Put your hands up if you've made a video call on your phone for work. One or two. Um, I'm not saying that all clients are going to want video calls. I'm just saying let's be ready for change. Change is happening.